You've lost touch with who you are, the core of your being. You're on social media too much. You're listening to what other people are telling you. You gotta listen to yourself. You gotta cut all that shit out. You have to look at the things that you love and the things that you hate. So what you don't like is very instructive to you, right? You're looking at things that are very powerful inside of you, that are emotional, they're not intellectual, they're thoughts, they're feelings, they're emotions, they're visceral things that you connect to. I've always followed the laws of power, which is change things up, enter action with boldness, don't be afraid to do things differently, adapt your strategy to the circumstance. Well, it's never too late. The earlier you figure it out, the better off you are, but it can happen later in life. Now, I figured out at an early age that I wanted to write. I didn't know what I wanted to write, but I loved words and I loved writing. And if I didn't have that connection when I was eight years old, all the way into high school and college, I would have been a lost soul. And I empathize with a lot of people who don't have that feeling when they're eight or 18 or in their 20s. But I've tried to tell people, everybody has it. You're just not listening to yourself. You've lost touch with who you are, that there are five forms of intelligence. We normally associate intelligence with intellectuals, with our Noam Chomsky, with Albert Einstein. And he says, no, intelligence comes in all forms. Working with your hands is a form of intelligence. A carpenter has a high form of intelligence. People who are sports, who are athletic, who use their body, that's another form of intelligence. There's music, there's math, there's language. You have one of these frames of mind. By the way your brain is wired, you, have, you are inclined towards one of them. Figure that out. And you gotta be a bit bold. And you have to embrace what makes you different. It takes time. To do anything in life takes time and hours and patience and work. So I like to tell people to go back to their earliest childhood memories of things that really excited them before they got mixed up with parents and teachers and all that other people telling them stuff, you know? You gotta cut all that shit out. You know, I was, I was frustrated, I was depressed. I even have to admit I had moments that were slightly suicidal because I knew deep down that I could do something. I was, I was different from other people, I had different experiences. You know, and I knew that I had, there was something I needed to express. There was a purpose to the, how my life had unfolded, but I couldn't find it. I had tried everything. I had every, tried every form of writing, every possible endeavor you can imagine. It just didn't click. So I was very deeply frustrated. And the frustration I tell people, it's a good thing. Negative emotions are trying to teach you something. They're trying to teach you the opposite. Something else is going on. Frustration, if I was simply, what would be worse than frustration would be despair, giving up, no hope. But frustration is a sign that you haven't given up. You're, you know you can do something, but you haven't figured it out. So when you have those kind of feelings, look at them and there's something positive in that. So I knew that there was something I was meant to do. I just couldn't figure it out when. You don't know who you are, what drives you, what really motivates you deep down. And so you're kind of wandering in life. And when you're unmoored from yourself, everything else will affect you in a way that you cannot control, right? If you don't know like mm. what you were intended to do in life, like what your career was that meshes with you well, right? You're going to be making all of these wrong decisions and you're going to things, people will do things to you that you won't be able to understand why you're reacting the way you're reacting. Yes. You'll get lost. You'll end up in blind alleys with your career. And the real problem is in you, not in the world, mm. right? You don't know who you are. And it's not easy. I have sympathy for people because we're so distracted. We're so much in our phones. We're so much listening to what other people are telling us is cool on Instagram, on TikTok, on Facebook, etc. <clears throat> we're like creatures of media. We've been programmed. We don't know really what drives us anymore. We, we're so tuned to what other people are telling us is what we should be interested in, right? So it's not easy. It takes, it takes some time. It takes some reflection, right? That means that you have to, be, have to have the ability to step back, be alone, be alone with your thoughts, meditate and reflect on your childhood, on who you are, on the mistakes you've made, on the wrong career paths you've taken, on the wrong relationships you've mm. taken, and begin to construct an image of that real secret inner, the true Lewis house that lies mm. buried deep. If you can't control yourself, you can't, con if you don't know yourself, you can't control your own emotions. You're gonna be reacting to everything that comes your way without having understanding why you're doing that. You have to start with yourself. So if you know that you were destined for something or that you were fated for something, mm. that you have a sense that your life had a meaning, a purpose, mm. then you can withstand the traumas, the setbacks, the difficulties, 
the bullshit criticism and all the other things. And that there's a reason for that. There's a purpose behind it. And the purpose behind it is our culture, and the same thing as in nature, thrives by the, di di the diversity, the people coming at into it with different angles, different perceptions, different ideas. Mm -hmm. That's what makes a, a culture creative, etc. It's why the Renaissance was so great. All right. So it is a purpose for you being who you are. You have to develop some fire inside of you. So you want to have accomplished something in life, something that you're proud of. It doesn't have to be a book or anything. Right. It can be something that lasts, that, that you're proud of, that gives you a sense of accomplishment, right? Because that carries off into every aspect of your life. It carries off into your relationships. Mm -hmm. It carries off into, into how well you sleep at night, etc. So you don't, you want to have that in life. You want to accomplish something. What is it? What is it I want to accomplish? What was I meant to accomplish? And how can I start on the process tomorrow? Not next week or next year, tomorrow. Well, you know, sometimes in life you just sort of fall into things. I didn't really intend when I was a young man, when I was 18 and dreaming of my future and being a writer, that this would be the kind of book that I would write. But my experiences in life kind of put me down a particular path. I learned certain lessons. So I had a lot of bad experiences. I had a lot of tough things that I had gone through. So that kind of informed me. It was sort of a, a, a mix of circumstance and good luck. And I was able to draw upon everything that I had learned and all of my skills in life. So sometimes you hit upon something, it feels right, you know? like. Working in Hollywood, I was never comfortable. It didn't feel right. I'm I'm kind of an entrepreneur at heart. I like working for myself. I don't like working for other people. I like to control what I do. Some of that's a bit negative, whatever. You have to understand the political game. You have to be able to play to what's going to please them. You have to be able to get rid of your ego sometimes mm -hmm. and do things that maybe aren't exactly what you want to do, yes. but, is, but is, is the right career move. You also have to know how to package things. Um, and I talk a lot about that in my books, in the 48 Laws of Power. You have to understand human psychology. People want drama. They want something that stands out. They want something that's strong that's forceful, that's impactful, right? And you're sitting here writing something that kind of meanders, that sells it kind of in this half-baked way, etc. No, you've got to you've got to hit directly. You have to hit people's emotions, not their intellect, not their ideas, mm. right? I mean, it's the whole thing. You have to understand human nature, you have to understand psychology, you have to understand politics and egos. Try too many things in life. Mm. You can try to learn too many things, right? And never master one of them, right? So people's are kind of trying too many different things and they're not like learning one thing mm. really, really, really well. Yes. And so that's 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 kind of the, like the, the main fault I see in a lot of people, particularly when they're young. Because mm -hmm. it, it's, it's very difficult when you're, there's so many things out there and there's so many temptations. Yeah.